So let's jump right into it. Um, before we get started, I, I just want to point out that there's a, there's a CBCRM hashtag, which is used just about everywhere. Hashtags can be used, you know, Twitter, Facebook. Um, there's an IRC channel, um, hashtag CBCRM. Um, if, if you have any questions, you're free to jump into any of those um, networks and try to to tag Civi CRM and usually somebody will will answer. Uh, if you have any trouble with that, you can always um, reach out to Square as well on Twitter um, at Square S K V A R E, and we'll try to help you in any way that we can. And when I send this follow up email, you'll have my personal contact information as well too. So you're always welcome to reach out to me via email or some other means if you have a direct question for me. Um, there's also a Civi CRM chat community. Uh, they use a system called Mattermost. It's kind of like Slack uh, for Civi CRM. And uh, that is at chat.civicrm.org. Um, so anyone is free to log on there. There's several different channels uh, about topics related to Civi CRM. And a lot of people find that useful if they have kind of a, a general question or, or maybe even a specific question about how something should work. Um, somebody can jump on there and answer that pretty quickly. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up via email after this call, and I'll be sure that I put some of these links that I mentioned throughout the uh, presentation here. So let's see. Who do we have on the call? We have a good mixture of people from um, all around the country. It looks like we might even have uh, some international people on the line. Uh, and it looks like we've got a pretty good mix of people that uh, are already using Civi CRM or simply just evaluating it to see if it's a good fit for their organization. Um, so you're definitely in the right place, uh, especially for those of you evaluating CRM systems. Uh, this is going to be a great place to start. And for some of you that have already started using Civi CRM, I think the question segment at the end of, of the presentation will be very helpful for you. So if you do have any questions um, throughout the presentation, uh, you can pop them into the GoToMeeting chat box, and um, and then we'll open it up at the end of the session and go through some specific questions. So the agenda today is um, why you would need a CRM system. Uh, what features may be interested to you? Uh, and then what are some of the components of Civi CRM specifically? And then we'll take a look at a couple of use cases for some of our own clients and how they use Civi CRM. So there's a little debate in the community about what the C stands for in CRM. Um, at, at a very base level, it's a contact. Um, you know, it can also be considered a client, a customer, a constituent. Um, but most people kind of think of it as a contact, contact relationship manager system. So why might you need a CRM? Okay. Well, back in the day, you know, organizations usually had uh, some person in the center, maybe an account manager, and all information would flow in through this account manager. They'd be a kind of the central point of contact and know, you know, everything about the client or, or constituent. Um, well, today, you know, organizations are getting bigger. Our means of communication and technology are changing. Um, so what we see now is uh, something more like this. You know, communication doesn't always flow into a central point. You may have interactions from um, other members of your organizations, like maybe you have a person in charge of memberships and a person in charge of event registrations. And um, perhaps you're interacting with customers in, in different ways, like the event person's talking to people at events, etc. So how do you keep track of all this stuff? Um, you know, to further complicate things, um, a lot of people get trapped into this multitude of different uh, systems to try to accomplish their needs. And there's a lot of great tools out there, uh, you know, like Salesforce, great customer relationship manager. Evite's great for events, you know, PayPal, they allow you to take donations and stuff like that. But the problem is, is you start having a splintering of data. Uh, so, you know, you don't really have a, a central repository where all this stuff talks to each other. 
you know, you may have to go to Evite to get details on who is registered for your event. And maybe that doesn't tie back to Salesforce. So you don't know when you're looking up a person in Salesforce if they've registered for any events or made donations or, or anything like that. Um, so, you know, this kind of begs the question, where does your data live and do you have visibility into all of your data? So this is really where uh, Civi CRM comes into play. Uh, Civi CRM is a free open source system and it can manage all your contacts activities, but it has many other functions as well. Um, you know, aside from just being open source and, and capable to be flexible enough to fit your own business needs, it has a wide variety of features that you see a lot of these individual systems have. And it does a lot of that stuff very well. So it's more than just like a module that you would install. It's a, it's a whole platform. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you a little background. Civi CRM um, started back in uh, 2004, and uh, it was started for nonprofits. So uh, everything has kind of been built with nonprofits in mind. Um, however, we're seeing a lot more for-profit businesses leveraging the system as well, you know, especially for the CRM portion, uh, event management, and um, email blast tools. So don't think of this as uh, specifically a non-profit CRM system. So as I mentioned, it is an open source uh, piece of technology. Basically what open source means is uh, developers have full access to the underlying code. So this allows uh, the community, uh, Civi CRM community, to contribute back to the project and you have multiple people creating new features, fixing bugs and security issues. Um, you know, often with a, a software as service type solution, if you find a bug or request a new feature, it's going to be up to um, the owner of that product to determine when that gets fixed. You know, it could be you could you could wait months for a new feature or even years to come in. Whereas if when you have you know, hundreds or thousands of people kind of working together in an open source community. Um, you may have somebody else that's already developed that feature, or maybe they developed it close enough to fit your needs and you just need to customize it yourself. And then you have the capability of customizing it yourself. Um, you know, a lot of the other services, they will not let you touch their code whatsoever. It's kind of what you see is, is what you get. Um, Civi CRM is web based. So, um, it's not sitting on some internal server that can only be accessed by um, your office. Uh, you're certainly uh, capable of limiting access to maybe you know, an IP address or something if you did want that. Um, but since it's web-based, it could be accessed um, anywhere via a web browser. So you don't necessarily have to be in your office. You could be on the road um, in, a, in another state, even in another country, and be able to access it. Uh, it's been internationalized, and what I mean by that is it's been translated into um, several different languages like Spanish and German and French and Japanese and like Polish and Portuguese. Um, it also has a localization of addresses, and dates, and currency. So you know, if, you're, if you're a UK company, you can have all your, your prices in pounds versus dollars, and if your date formats change, um, or address formats uh, that can all be customized based on your location or your users locations. And finally, it integrates directly into your website. Um, your uh, typically uh, the three main open source content management systems like Drupal, uh, WordPress and Joomla are the primary ones. Um, so let's see who uses the this type of system in the real world um, we see you know associations um, advocacy groups um, schools and universities um, and even some small businesses whether uh, for-profit or just small nonprofit organizations um, let's see a couple of use cases it's a client of ours the uh, National Athletic Trainers Association uh, they use Civi CRM for membership management. Uh, they have also a separate learning management system 
um, which offers, you know, like online training courses and stuff like that. And that's tied back in the city CRM so they can kind of track their members' progress uh, and whether or not they've earned their, their continual education credits and uh, just kind of get a holistic view of how a person has been progressing through those courses. Um, we also see Salvation Army Echelon using Civi CRM. Uh, Echelon is, is kind of the, the younger um, generation of, of Salvation Army. Um, this website has chapters from all over the country um, working through the same Civi CRM database. So you could get on a granular level and see what just a specific chapter has raised in donations or, you know, event registration fees, membership dues, or you could even look at it on, on a holistic uh, national level and, and kind of aggregate all that stuff together. So that's one of the cool benefits of, of having everything in a central system. You know, you can uh, look at everything or segment it down to just the pieces uh, that are important to you. Uh, Salvation Army specifically uh, uses uh, the membership registration portion, keep track of all their membership dues. Um, they have um, one-time donations, so people just want to donate you know, $50. Uh, they can send out email blasts through uh, the Civi mail extension. And they also use it to manage volunteer opportunities. So I think most people that are familiar with Salvation Army are, are familiar with the people that stand out on the, in front of the stores with the bells and, and the Salvation Army bucket. So um, with the Civi Volunteer Extension, um, people can go on and sign up for different time slots. And then you can use Civi CRM to send out reminders and emails and stuff like that to all those people that are signed up. Another organization here is Texas Archaeological Society. Um, they uh, mostly use Civi CRM for memberships. Uh, they have different types of memberships, uh, which is another advantage of Civi CRM. So you can have like an individual membership, um, a family membership. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me back up here. Um, and then they also take, you know, one-time donations. They have a lot of um, paid events where they have people come and, you know, sign up for archaeological digs like you see these young people here. And uh, then they also have their own little e-commerce store, um, which uh, is, is implemented more on the Drupal side, but it does um, keep track of some of, of those sales um, on the Civi CRM contact records. So everything uh, that these people do on this website, sign up for memberships, make donations, register for events, buy stuff from the store, that all gets stored in the Civi CRM database. Um, another example is the University of Minnesota Foundation. So they're, they're kind of the fundraising of the University of Minnesota. And they kind of use Civi CRM in, an, in a unique way um, they have this site that's kind of like Kickstarter. Uh, people have personal campaign pages. So you could see down here, there's a few things down at the bottom, like adoption medicine clinic. So people can go on and create these campaigns and then, um, and then, uh, you, they can get other people to, um, donate to their funds. So you can, promote it on social media and say, hey, go to this website and donate for, for this uh, charity that I'm trying to raise money for. And of course, all that activity gets logged into Civi CRM. So you could set up different types of contacts in Civi CRM. Um, you know, some of the ones out of the box here are volunteers, individuals, organizations, etc. Um, but it allows you to create any contact type that you want. Um, and you can label those however you, you want. And uh, one of the benefits of having different types of contacts is you can create your own set of, of data fields for each of these uh, types. 
So maybe you need to collect a little bit more information from somebody um, that's a volunteer versus somebody that just made a, a one-time donation. And then, of course, you can filter um, when you're searching for contacts by different types, too. So if you just wanted to see everyone that's volunteered for your organization, you can quickly pull that up and just see all your volunteers. Uh, that was a nice segue. So, uh, you know, you can segment your contacts, um, not just by contact type, um, but there's a number of ways you can segment your contacts. Um, you can put contacts into groups. Um, there's a tagging system. Um, for example, we at, we at Square, we, we tag all of our clients with the uh, version of City CRM that they're on. So if we ever have uh, an update that needs to be made, we can email blast just the people that are on that specific version. Um, and you can also segment by activities too. So like, for example, um, all of you that registered for this event, I can just pull up a list of contacts for people that registered for this one event. Um, and it also allows you to track relationships. Um, so, uh, for example, you know, you can, you can keep track of employers and their relationship to the employees. Uh, and you can keep track of referrals, you know, who's referred a client to you. Um, relationships can also uh, be integrated with memberships. So what I mean by that is sometimes we'll have um, an organization that has other organizations sign up for a membership, and they want um, individuals in their organization to be able to take advantage of the membership. So basically with the relationship, you can log in different individuals and they inherit that membership and, uh, and can be maintained on kind of an organizational level. And then once the organization membership expires, then all of those individuals lose access to the membership portion of the, the website. Uh, you can track activities. That's probably one of the, the biggest things aside from your general contact information. Um, for example, like anything that you do, um, within the city CRM system or on their website can be tracked. So for example, um, you know, you can see when people have renewed their membership, um, if they've signed up for an event, um, if they received a certain email blast that you sent out, and then you can filter by all these um, activities too. Um, there's also activity types that can be created. So. For example, um, an activity type would be, you know, bulk email. Um, that would show you all of your your activities just related to emails that were sent to this person. Or you could look up uh, event registrations and just see all the events that a person has um, signed up for. So, uh, oh, and one more thing, you can also um, send out reminders. So, for example, membership dues are probably the the biggest. Uh, reason for having a reminder. So somebody's membership is about to expire. Um, there's an interface in Civi CRM where you can um, set up uh, set up emails to go out and remind them to renew their membership um, in various different ways. Uh, for example, I mean you could you could set that you want it to send out you know a month before their membership ends. Or maybe you want to send it out a month and a week before the membership ends. Um, you can even uh, remind <laughs> remind them as much as you want. So, for example, you know, if you wanted to send it every day of that last week uh, before their membership expires, then you have the flexibility to do that too. And the reminder system's pretty flexible, um, and that can work for event, events too. So, you all would have received an email reminding you of this webinar. That was done through the Civi CRM um, reminders piece. So the main thing Civi CRM does is it helps you organize your contacts, maintain your relationships, and track your activities. So let's touch on some of the features. Um, it works pretty much out of the box, but it can be extended to include a bunch of additional features, um, such as reports. Um, there is a, a extension directory on the Civi CRM website, and I'll be sure I send that link to you all. Um, but you can go in through there and just search. Uh, there's hundreds of extensions in there. 
Um, it can integrate with other modules in your content management system. Um, so I'm a Drupal guy. Um, one of the things that we love about it is it can integrate directly with uh, Drupal views and Drupal rules and also Drupal commerce. Um, and so you, you can get kind of a seamless integration there. Um, there's also a module that Square maintains called Civi CRM Entity, and that's just for Drupal, um, but it gives you further integration within Drupal. Um, so we have a whole section in our blog um, for Civi CRM Entity. Um, if you have any questions about that, a um, good place to start is looking through some of our, our blog articles to see some of the features that are developed there. The, the main benefit of having Civi CRM Entity is you can pull in Civi CRM data into Drupal and then manipulate that data um, kind of the Drupal way. You, know, you can build out pages to be a little bit more custom looking or flashy and use views to um, organize it a little bit better. Uh, it has user synchronization between the CMS and the CRM. So for example, somebody comes on and signs up for uh, an account on your website uh, contact record in Civi CRM can automatically be created. And uh, let's say maybe uh, they go on to their their user profile and change their uh, mailing address. That can get updated in Civi CRM too. I mean, it has import and export capabilities. So you can import a CSV file or even a SQL query. Um, and then it gives you a really easy to use interface to match those fields. So it'll show you all the columns from your spreadsheet. And then there's drop downs to map all of those fields to where they would um, end up in Civi CRM. And Civi CRM has its own export capabilities. Um, again, if you're using Drupal, it's integrated with Drupal views. So you can also use views to create reports and, um, uh, and use the views data export um, option to, to create CSV exports that way. And get a little bit more granular on the Drupal side. Um, and the search is very flexible. So aside just for searching you know, a name and an email address, um, just about every aspect of Civi CRM can be searched upon. You can search for a specific relationship, um, you can search for maybe uh, just female people or you know, combine those two. Maybe you just want to see females that are spouses of another uh, contact. Um, you know, you can even search for specific activities. So let's say you sent out an email blast um, in the activity. You could search for the email blast subject and then see a list of um, everyone that received that. Same thing with like event registrations or different membership types. You know, maybe you have um, an individual membership versus a student membership, um, and you can combine any of those together with any other search criteria. Um, another key feature that people uh, use Civi CRM for is to help access control on your website. So typically, you know, members have some sort of benefit of becoming a member. And uh, a lot of that can be accessed through organizations' websites. So um, the access control rules allow you to um, you know, grant uh, access to specific things um, based on membership. So if, just to give you an example, we have some organizations that do not want people registering for events unless they're already a member of the organization. Um, so you could set access control rules that say you have to have an active membership on file before you can register for this event. Um, it allows you to create custom fields. So not only custom fields on contacts, but you can create them for um, events, activities, um, just about any, anything in Civi CRM. Um, so you can, you can get really granular. You can, uh, you can customize the experience based on, on your specific needs. It has its own uh, deduping system. So in general, and this goes for whatever CRM system you use, you, you want to make sure that your database is clean and you don't have 
duplicate records floating around and stuff like that. Um, so there's a, a simple way to merge just two contacts together in Civi CRM um, and just move over all their activities, their relationships, their contribution records, everything. Um, and then they have like a dedupe tool um, which allows you to set up different uh, rules um, to search uh, for duplicates and then merge them together. So for example, you could say like a duplicate to me is just a person that has the same name and same email and two different contact records. Or maybe um, you want to uh, look for people that have the same name and mailing address. So there's a, bu a bunch of various options that you can have to actually find those duplicates and then merge them together. And you can also run um, these dedupe rules as you're importing data. Um, so let's say you have a, a massive spreadsheet with you know thousands of people in there, and there may be some of these rows that are already um, related to existing contact in your database. As you import it, it can go through those dedupe rules and merge them um, with the existing contact records based on the criteria that you define, or it'll create new ones. And then of course, tracking, as we mentioned before, you know, if somebody fills out a form on the website or registers for an event or renews their membership, all that stuff is tracked in City CRM. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one more point here. Uh, it does have mapping capabilities as well. So uh, whenever you put in a uh, address, it can geocode those addresses, and it's integrated with uh, OpenStreetMaps, Google Maps, and uh, Yahoo Maps. And then you have the option to display um, you know, those contacts on a map if you wanted to now that you have the geocoded information. To speed up a little bit, I know we're about halfway through here. Um, feel free to uh, jump into the chat if you have any specific questions. But let's take a quick look at some of the key components of Civi CRM. Um, so there's Civi Contribute. That's the piece that handles all the money. Um, so it, uh, contribution to Civi CRM could be like a one-time donation. It could be an event fee or it could be membership dues. Um, so you'll see some of these other components will work with Civi Contribute. Um, for example, Civi Member, as I mentioned, will create a contribution record via Civi Contribute. Same thing with Civi Events. It uses Civi Contribute for the event registration. Um, the other key component that um, people use more often than not is the Civi Mail component. So again, that's to send out email blasts um, to people within your database. And there's a lot more components than this. I mean, there's ones to help with HR, um, the Civi Volunteer um, for volunteer organizations, um, Civi Case, which is kind of uh, like tracking uh, support tickets uh, would be one scenario for that. And then uh, aside from components, you then have extensions, which can extend those that functionality a little bit further. So for example, for Civi Mail, um, there's a component or an extension uh, called Mosaico that gives you like a drag and drop email builder interface, which is pretty cool. I'm going to take a look at each one of these a little bit closer. So as I mentioned before, Civi Contribute um, can handle uh, the donations, um, whether they be one time or a membership pledge. Um, Anything that happens online on your website is automatically logged into Civi CRM. Um, but there's also an, an offline capability as well. So um, if somebody were to maybe make a donation at an event, you can come back later and import that data or add it manually yourself. Uh, it has configurable configurable pages and receipts. So after um, somebody makes a contribution, you can customize all the data points that are put into the receipts. Um, and then it works with the plugins. Primarily, the uh, main one is payment processor. So um, you know, there's different plugins depending on which processor you use. For example, PayPal and Authorize.net, those are kind of the two biggest ones. Um, IATS, 
IATS um, is another payment processor that really focuses on integrating with Civi CRM. So if you're in uh, if you're in the market for looking for a new payment processor to work with Civi CRM, we highly recommend looking at IATS uh, just because their level of integration with the system is is far beyond any of the others. Um, a Civi member obviously it handles your your membership records, but there's different types of memberships that you can set up. Um, for example, uh, you can have a calendar year membership where people have a membership from January 1 to December 31st, or you can have rolling memberships, which is your membership lasts for 365 days from today. Um, it's self-servicing, so people can um, sign up for a membership themselves and renew themselves, and uh, there's not really any interaction needed from the organization itself. And as I mentioned before, you know, there's reminders that can be sent out. So you can, you can remind people a certain amount of time before their, their membership's up for renewal. And then um, once they renew, it's just automatically updated. And, of course, you can do this um, manually yourself in the back end or via an import. And there's different tiers of membership. We kind of touched on this before. You can have a family um, membership, organizational membership, individual individual membership. And then um, the membership records themselves have their own set of rules, um, specifically related to the statuses. So one example is, let's say a, you want to provide a grace period. Um, somebody's membership has expired, but you don't want to immediately take away access from the website. You want a grace period of, let's say, 30 days after it's expired. So you can set rules to say exactly how long that grace period is or if there's even a grace period at all. Um, Civi Event handles the event registration. Um, you know, you can create uh, event information pages if you just want you know, a, a calendar of events. Um, but this gives you the ability to allow users to RSVP, much like you all did for this webinar. Um, you have the option to um, charge a registration fee. And uh, the, the system has um, what they call price sets. So you can set up different price sets for events. And then you can um, base discounts and stuff off of, of rules. So, for example... Um, let's say you want to charge $50 less for your event um, before June 1st. And after June 1st, um, you know, it's $50 more. Um, so you can set up in your price set um, what dates those different prices um, would appear. And then the system automatically handles that itself. You know, once June 1st comes around, the price just changes on the front end of the website. Um, there's also an extension called Civi Discount, um, which is maybe kind of your more uh, standard idea of a discount. It allows you to create like discount codes uh, that you can send out to people. So when they're registering for an event, they can get a specific discount. Um, we've seen people um, use this for you know, like an exhibitor at their event. So they sign up um, to have a booth at the event. Maybe you want to give them a coupon code for a uh, a few people uh, to get into the event itself for free. Uh, Jim, I see your questions here. I'll come back to this towards the end. Um, and just like the contributions, um, the Civi event system uh, can send you a, a receipt of the, the actual uh, contribution amounts and, and how you uh, paid for it, whether it was, um, like credit card or check, et cetera. And those can all be sent via email and customized as well. Uh, the events uh, can also be exported to iCal and RSS feeds. Uh, the Civi mail component is one of the most popular features. So you can send personalized emails. It has a, a token-based system. So there's a whole uh, search interface for finding tokens and, uh, and uh, you can say stuff like, if you want to 
address somebody by first name. You could say like, hey, token first name, and then that'll pull in like Brian um, when the email blast goes out. Um, it also auto files outgoing emails as they are sent out. So you can have an archive uh, online of old emails like newsletters. Um, it, it also tracks like uh, the number of opens, uh, click through rates, whether or not they've been forwarded. Um, it also handles um, bounce processing. So if an email address is bad, um, it'll flag that email address. And the next time you send out an email blast, it'll just skip over that one. Um, that's important because um, if, if you send too many emails that bounce back, you have the potential of your domain getting blacklisted, which essentially means after a while, um, some services may just not accept emails from your domain. So you want to definitely make sure no matter what system you use for mass emails that there's some sort of bounce processing tied to it. And then it also has built-in opt-out and unsubscribe features, which is now a requirement in the U.S. Um, for the span, Can Spam Act. And you'll see uh, when you try to build out an email and you don't put any opt-out or unsubscribe options, it won't even let you continue on to the next step. Um, it will notice a pop-up that you have not included opt-out information yet. Um, as I mentioned before, there is an extension called Mosaico. I've got this little animation here. Basically, uh, the default CIV email system, you can use HTML and kind of code out your email to look however you want, or just do a simple plain text. Um, but this extension gives you a little drag and drop um, builder interface, much like you would see in like MailChimp or something like that. Um, so this is uh, available in CIV CRM versions 4.7 and above. Um, and uh, anyone that we've installed this for uh, absolutely loves it. So how do we get started? Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure you plan out how this system works for your organization. So it's kind of like a stack of Lego blocks. You can put them together in a whole bunch of different ways to accomplish your needs. So you really need to figure out what's best for your organization. Um, we recommend creating some formal documentation outlining your specific needs. So if you were to work with an implementer or a developer, um, you kind of have uh, an outline of exactly what your organization needs first. You obviously need to plan a budget to deploy it. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean a financial budget. It could just be time and resources from people within your organization. Um, but you definitely need to set aside time for cleaning and deduping your data, um, collecting and importing data from your other systems that you may have been using in the past, um, somebody to identify what dedupe rules are needed, um, and really just someone that understands uh, the workflow of, uh, and processes that are, are needed for your organization. And that amount of time will vary just based on your organization's size, your needs, or just the level of customizations you have built into the system. Um, and then uh, we, we recommend um, having a point person, like a project manager, to help guide through that process. So cost... Um, there is obviously some implementation costs to get you set up, um, and I don't mean, again, uh, financial costs. Um, CIVI CRM is free to download and, and to install, but it is going to take a little bit of time to get it implemented um, with your website and customize the way that you want. Um, the configuration and hosting. Uh, CIVI CRM um, doesn't always work great on a shared hosting environment. It, well, it depends on the scale of your application. You just want to make sure that your hosting provider is capable of running CIVI CRM um, and it, whatever um, contact, uh, content management system you may use, like Drupal or WordPress. And you also need to uh, consider upgrades. So CIVI CRM um, releases upgrades once a month 
And those aren't always security releases. Sometimes they include new features. Um, but at the very least, you want to plan on keeping uh, security patches within the system, which are typically every other month that those are released. And you certainly don't want to get too far behind those because as a new release contains new features, um, it, if you get too far behind, it can just take a little bit more time to sort out any issues that may have arise from new features. So one way to get around that is there is a long-term support version that is Civi CRM 4.6 LTS. And with the LTS version, um, basically there's no new features being added to that version. Um, it, we only backport um, security fixes and any critical bugs. So you can, you can be rest assured that everything will kind of keep working as it did before you tried to upgrade. So um, civicrm.org has a, a bunch of great information on their website. Definitely poke around in there and, and uh, see what you can find. As I mentioned, they have a, a chat system at chat.civicrm.org. Um, there's a, a lot of online documentation for various versions of CiviCRM. And then they have other related services like um, there's a stack exchange uh, for CiviCRM. Uh, that's a place where developers can go and ask specific questions. Uh, and that's found at civicrm.stackexchange.com. And I'll be sure that I put those in the, the follow-up email. And uh, CVCRM also has an online demo. If you go to civicrm.org slash demo, um, there's demos in, in a few different languages. And uh, you can jump in there and just start playing with it. Um, just be aware that the demos are publicly accessible, so don't put any personal information in there. And uh, also know that uh, the data resets often and automatically, so don't expect to jump in there and fill out some information and then come back a week later to show somebody that it will probably be gone. Um, but just go ahead and jump in and start poking around. And then if you have any direct questions, you, you can reach out to me or um, somebody else from Square, and we can talk about um, any uh, specific implementation needs that you may have for your organization. And then the community itself is, is it's big, it's welcoming, friendly. Um, they have user summits, um, training courses, local meetups. Uh, a lot of this can be found on uh, civicrm.org's event section. Um, you can also um, peruse the CiviCRM hashtag on like Twitter and see people talking about events that they may have coming up. So I definitely encourage you all to find one of these events and, and go check them out if you have any more questions. All right, so I've seen some questions here about uh, Drupal versus WordPress um, that I want to be sure to answer because that is a very common question. And I'll admit, uh, I may be a little biased in this answer. I, I am a Drupal guy. Uh, we are a Drupal shop, and we do mostly work with Drupal websites. Um, I think Thomas mentions here in the chat that uh, it is kind of the default CMS that's used. Um, let me back up for a second and, and just explain um, one subtle difference. So it is perfectly capable to run a separate instance of Civi CRM that is not attached to your website. You know, for example, let's say you already have a WordPress site and you build a, a website in Wix. Well, you could manually import and export data in between the two and, and kind of have your own instance. Um, using WordPress and and or Drupal with Civi CRM gives you the bonus of integrating uh, parts of your website together. So whereas if you were using Wix or something like that, you may be in, involved in like on a regular basis exporting and importing data. Um, with Drupal or WordPress um, and even Joomla, you can integrate uh, some forms built in the website directly with Civi CRM. So you don't have to do any of those manual processes. And the integration between the content management side and the Civi CRM side is a little bit better in my opinion in Drupal. And there are um, a lot more um, modules, uh, like Drupal modules available to help with that integration. Like I mentioned, 
the CIVI CRM entity one. I don't know too much about like an equivalent version of that for WordPress, um, but let me pull up this link here. Um, one second here. So if you go to the CIVI CRM documentation website, there is a section here about WordPress integration um, that I'd encourage you to take a look at, Morgan. Um, if you look down here at the bottom, it does mention a couple of plugins to help with syncing data. I personally do not know much about either one of these plugins, but it looks like you have a couple of options, and I do see here that it will sync some additional information besides just the email address. So I take a look at this list here, and I'll put this in our follow-up email at the end of the call. Um, uh, and also notice over here in the left-hand side menu, there is an incompatible plugins section. So um, I've noticed like some really popular things like Yoast SEO and Uber menu, um, Facebook like, there may be some plugins like that that could be conflicting with your installation. So you might wanna look over this list as well and, uh, and see if that helps resolve your, your syncing issue. Um, but it's really it's really up to you, um, you know, which CMS that you want to use. If you do not have a website already and you're thinking about building um, a brand new one from scratch, I would personally recommend Drupal um, just because uh, the integration is a little bit tighter. So I hope that answers your question there, Morgan. All right, and I know there's a couple of questions about the recording. This will be sent to um, everyone that registered for the event on civicrm.org, and uh, we will be posting a version on our website. Um, so you'll get the link to the version posted on our website. Feel free to share that with your colleagues, friends, um, whoever you want. We've got about 10 more minutes here. Does anyone else have any specific questions about maybe their own implementation or um, uh, capabilities of CIVI CRM? So uh, Thomas here asked a question about utilizing CIVI CRM for political group campaigns. So uh, he wants to know if there is a, a tool that will help with this. So yes, I'm sorry I did not touch on that during the presentation, but there is a campaign management tool built into Civi CRM core. So it's perfect for stuff like this. And as a matter of fact, Civi CRM is used for a lot of um, political campaigns and fundraising. So uh, kind of how that works is you can set up a campaign and tie things to a campaign. So let's say, for example, you have like a, a contribution form where you want to take donations specific to a, let's say a cause or, you know, a, a type of campaign. And you also have uh, fundraising events. You can tie those back to the campaign. So then when you go look at the profits or revenue from a specific campaign, it, it ties that information together. So you would have um, like a grand total of this campaign received X amount of donations and X amount of revenue from events. And you'd, you'd have kind of a total sum per campaign. And then, of course, you can always look at, at that rolled up all together. So you could look at, um, you know, how much funds we've raised across all campaign initiatives over a period of time. And, uh, you know, the user segmenting is also very helpful for uh, something like this. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's the, um, the automatic segmentation of event attendees, um, such as... Uh, you know, if if everybody uh, enrolled in this one event that's related to your campaign, then you can uh, tag them in a certain way or put them in a certain group in CV CRM and uh, maybe send out different email messages uh, to that group specific about the campaign that you know they care about. It was a great question. Um, so uh, there's a follow-up question here about creating a list of members and users by geographical group or canvassing. So uh, CIVI CRM 
um, by default has geocoding and mapping capabilities. Uh, you will need to register for an API key from either Google Maps, API Map, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Yahoo Maps, or OpenStreetMaps. So we typically use Google, but please know that uh, I think as of June 2018, um, they did uh, start monetizing their API usage. So you get uh, $200 in free credits a month from Google. Um, everybody gets that signing up. If you're a nonprofit, um, reach out to Google and apply for nonprofit status. They, Google gives you a ton of free stuff for being a nonprofit, um, including uh, extra API usage. Now, $200 uh, will get you quite a bit if you're only using it for geocoding. So when an address is entered into Civi CRM, it's automatically geocoded, assuming you have your API key in there, and you get longitude and latitude points stored on your contact record. Um, from there, you have a multitude of options. You know, if you wanted to, you could um, build some sort of mapping interface that plots points um, on a map of all your members. Uh, we use that on one of our clients um, who uh, they, they basically host um, cyclists, bicycle. And um, you could see on a map like all the members around you in an area and they're plotted on a point. Uh, you can also uh, click a little map on the contact records. There will be a map link if you have the API enabled and uh, see that that person directly on the map. Um, so it, it's there. The capability is there. You have your um, geocoding availables. And um, from there, um, if you wanted to do something a little bit more interactive where you know public users could get on and see a map of all your members, um, it's possible, but it will take a little bit of work to set up. Um, something that could probably be done uh, in Drupal fairly easily with, um, you could use like Drupal views and have a, uh, a mapping plugin. So uh, for example, views, uh, for those of you that don't know, is a way to kind of aggregate data together in Drupal. And so uh, with Civi CRM and Civi CRM entity, you could pull in that, um, that geocoding information into Drupal views and then create a list with a map display um, to, to plot all the points on a map. So that's one idea there. And, um, you know, similar to that, I had mentioned this bicycling community that uh, we work with. Um, so we have a map of pinpoints that users can go and see. Um, you could take that a step further and link them to a profile. So in our case, we want members talking to each other and stuff like that. So user can come click on a pinpoint, somebody next to them, click on their profile, and then send them. A, a contact form submission that only goes to their email address because that's the way we have it set up. And then they can kind of have a little one-on-one -on -one email conversation um, offline if they wanted to. All right, great question. Is there any other questions? Well, if you did not get a chance to ask a question, as I said, I would be sending a follow-up email. You will have my personal contact information. Feel free to email me your question, um, and we can take it from there. I hope all of you enjoyed this webinar, and uh, good luck on your fundraising. Have a good day.